Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome, sunny, 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 ninth day of April 2014, 8 a.m. Eastern, here at Blog Talk Radio. This is the Attitude of Gratitude show, which is live on Wednesday mornings at this time. Although I would like to add the caveat that on Wednesday, the 16th of April, there will not be an Attitude of Gratitude show. But at 10.30 Eastern, I'll be interviewing Simran Singh. And I hope you will tune in to listen to that. It's the Wisdom of Success program I'm going to be doing that day. And she's got a brand new book out called Your Journey to Enlightenment. And I really, really, really want everybody to tune in and hear that show. So we're placing all the emphasis on the wisdom of success that day. So anyway, normally you find us when you hear this music, opening up Attitude of Gratitude. Like I said, 8 a.m. on Wednesdays here at Perspective Power on Blog Talk Radio. We also know this music comes from the award-winning composer David Martinko, who is absolutely amazing. And if you go to his website, redbellymusic.com, you're going to find just a slew of great music to purchase, free downloads. And if you go to his group, sunshadows.net, go to that website, you're going to find, again, wonderful music, and not only to purchase, but to download. You can also look at redbellymusic.com and see the great videos that David has produced. So lots of really wonderful reasons to visit David Martinka's website. And equally wonderful reasons to be with us today live on the show. There's a couple of interesting things that have happened in my life in the last two or three days. There's always interesting things, but i got to tell you, when you talk about owning your attitude of gratitude, I wasn't really sure that this is what I wanted to talk about today. In fact, up until yesterday, around noonish, this was not what my topic was going to be. And what changed around noon yesterday was I got a phone call from my brother. My brother Mitchell lives up in Harrison, Michigan. And and he's a great guy. All my siblings are great siblings. They're all wonderful people. My sister Lorraine, my brother Mitchell, my um, sister of the heart, Kylie, who was actually here the day before with her kids and her mom, and we just had a grand time. And, in fact, I get to see my sister Lorraine, because we live in the same house, more frequently than I get to see my brother, and I actually get to see Kylie more frequently than I get to see my brother. So, nonetheless, these are all wonderful, exceedingly influential people in my life. And, I, and I'm grateful for that, and, and, I, and I say thank you to God for all of this wonderful energy in my life. So, my brother, getting back to the conversation I had with him on uh, Tuesday, the day before yesterday. Yesterday, rather. Duh. <laughs> I'll get my weeks and days straightened out here. One of the things he said to me is what sparked this. He said, what I've always my, admired about you, sis, is that you can live in the present moment, and that you do. <clears throat> and I thought... Well, that's what I strive for. I mean, I was a bit taken aback because he's never said these words to me before, and I never thought much about it. And I realized that when he said that, I had been spending quite a bit of my time not living in the present moment, seriously. And I I took that not only as the heartfelt compliment that he paid me, but as some inspiration here, you know, like this little sign this little floating, you know, angel in front of my face saying, hey, Annette, guess what? Live in the present moment. You know how you you always hear that that phrase, you know, don't kill the messenger? Well, we usually associate that phrase when we're hearing things we don't want to hear. And his compliment yesterday was definitely something heartwarming and and joy-filled to hear. But what if you were someone who didn't think that those words – about living in the present moment, were anything to write home about, maybe? To embrace, to own, to keep with us? You might think, you know, well, nobody asked you, and kind of blow that person off, thinking that it was the person that was the message and not the message that was the message. Now, did you get that? Did that make sense? So what I ended up thinking about was the ownership of the things that come to us and how we own them in a way that we're grateful for them. So that's where this whole own your attitude of gratitude thought came about. And what I mean by this, <clears throat> clearing my throat because it sounds like I'm going to say something, you know, fabulously wonderful and that you need to listen. 
when you when you decide that everything you hear and everything you see and everything you experience is something to be grateful for, that's what I mean by ownership, right? I'm going to own the guidance and direction that came in that conversation. I'm going to own the opportunity to find gratitude in every single moment. Because he didn't say living in the present hour, living in the present day, living in the present century, living in the present millennium. (laughs) (laughs) Got to get a little crazy there. It's coffee. Coffee does it to me all the time. And I'm grateful for my coffee. So grateful. But he said present moment. And I have to tell you that that phrase, present moment, goes way back, 15, 16, 17 years of my life, when I kept hearing that phrase over and over again. In fact, it goes back even further than that. It goes back well over 20 years ago that I kept hearing it. And that phrase has popped up in my life in so many ways, present moment, present moment, present moment, that I started having fun yesterday connecting with the idea of the present moment. And one of my dear friends, my other sister, sister Susie, is on the uh, is on the call, and she's she's a great one for reminding us about the things that we we don't get, we don't know, we don't remember. So I want to direct you to her website, which is Susie S U Z I Hendricks dot com, and to really pull yourself into alignment with the energy that she also provides. Because one of the things that Susie and I do is we're fascinated with numbers. We see numbers and they remind us of messages from angels. They remind us of all kinds of things. I just think that's absolutely amazing. So she and I were talking the other day and I said something about, yeah, I'm going to write a book and call it um, the Digital digital Clock Oracle or Digital Oracle or something like that. Because when I see my numbers, I have a little digital clock sitting here in my office like immediately to my right. And whenever I see the numbers... Like right now it says 807. So what I was doing yesterday is I was saying, wow, 807 reasons to be grateful for today. And it would make me smile. And then as I you know, would glance and see another number, like the guest call-in number begins with area code 347, I'd go, ooh, 347 reasons to be happy right now. And, I just, and it would make me smile, make me giggle. And I kept going through this all day long. And I wouldn't just say that. I would say other things. So watch, that, that book's coming, so keep an eye on that. But the idea here is, It was keeping me in the present moment. It was keeping me in the present moment because I was reacting to and embracing something I was seeing right then and there. Now, there's an an old saying that I actually flung at somebody like it was, you know, ice cream on a spoon, and it's don't borrow trouble. And I remember hearing that years and years ago, but I didn't remember why, and I didn't actually get it. When I, when I heard it, because I was a kid, you know, it was one of those mom-isms and grandma-isms and auntie so-and-so-isms that you would hear, don't borrow trouble. And I used to wonder what that meant. Well, I dwelled on that phrase so frequently that huh, I found out, because I actually lived it, because I would want to know what it meant so badly that the universe, all they heard me was embracing it so much, they said, well, let's show her. And it's like, okay, I get it. Thank you. I get it. So the idea here is what you dwell on with purpose and passion you are going to create. And if you're owning an attitude of gratitude, you are going to then create more things to be grateful for in your life. So not only do you know what it means to own your attitude of gratitude now, you also know why it's important, why it works, why it is so... why it is so valuable in our lives. You know, we we always look for the value in things. Like, of course there's value in money. We live in a society where what we trade for what we want is generally money. Now we can trade services. You know, if somebody you know is a gardener and you're a cook, well, guess what? There's a service made match made in heaven. The gardener can bring you the vegetables and you can cook the vegetables, give them back to the gardener. So what it does is the gardener spends all day working in the yard and you spend all day in the kitchen doing whatever you're doing and at the end of the day, you have food to eat and the gardener has food to eat. But the gardener didn't have to cook their food and you didn't have to garden that food. Well, if you're not connected to, 
live with, married to, or know a gardener, and you like to cook in order to get your food, if you're not going to garden it yourself, you're going to have to buy it. So that means that what we live in is a world where money is a huge, huge uh, means of, of living here. And it doesn't mean that we have to exalt money or revere it or give it more power than it deserves, but respect it and be grateful for it and be grateful for how it comes to us and be grateful that it does come to us. So when we're talking about things that we need in our life, the attitude of gratitude can very well bring us money. The attitude of gratitude can very well bring us food. The attitude of gratitude can very well bring us gardeners. Hello, all you gardeners out there who are either planting your gardens or getting ready to plant them now that spring is you know, finally deciding to wake up from her long winter's nap and bless us with earth that we can stick a spade in and flip that dirt and plant those seeds. So the thought process here here about owning our attitude of gratitude has a lot to do with what is around us on a daily basis. And by owning that, we are so connected to that higher consciousness, that higher energy that then brings us the things that we are focused on. And for you, today, the biggest thing that I can say is something that my brother said. I am so impressed and I so admire the fact that you live in the present moment. Now, notice I put that in the present tense. I didn't say, I'm going to be so impressed when you live. First of all, it doesn't really matter if I'm impressed by what you do or not do, because that should never be a reason you do something. This conversation came totally out of the blue. The phone call came totally out of the blue. And yet, it was a message that resonated so strong with me that I kept I kept dwelling on it, focusing on it, thinking on it. But not the fact that I may or may not have been living in the present moment, but just live in the present moment. I took the aspect of it, the part of it that worked. So what I would like to leave you with from the show today is whatever message you get, wherever you get it from, whoever you hear it from, it doesn't matter if it's somebody you know, somebody you don't know, if it's a message you think you don't need to hear, you do need to hear, Dwell on that that part of the message for which you can feel gratitude, for which you can embrace right there in that moment, right there in that moment. Because when you do, the interesting and wonderful thing about it is you're going to just expand. I said explode. That's what I was going to say. You just expand and expand into that ability to be grateful, into that ability to draw more things into your life that you can show gratitude for. And the really cool thing is, Gratitude, graciousness, it, it's all happiness, it's all joy, it's all love, it's all fun, it's all good, <laughs> it's all good. People used to say that a lot, and they still do. It is all good, and it's what we are here for. We are here because we are beings of light, beings of love, beings of joy. We are here because we are the energies that We're the innocent little children when we're born, when we just giggle when we see a sunbeam, or we delight when we see a dandelion gone to seed and the wind blows it, and all those little fairies, as I used to think they were, just scatter into the wind. That's who we really are. That is who we really are. We are those beings of delight and joy. And because of that, we can own our attitude of gratitude and make our world exactly what we'd like it to be. And one of the things that I would love to do is to help you make your world what you would like it to be. My work as a spiritual coach is um, very well known in the circles I work with. Find my information at annetterochelleaben.wordpress.com. Let me know how I can help you. Follow this program. I'd be honored at www.blogtalkradio.com backslash perspective power. Give yourself an opportunity to get a hold of some really, really great music by visiting the website redbellymusic.com and the website sunshadows.net and find out how to connect with award-winning artist David Martinka. It is free downloads as well as purchase the CDs. They are all fabulous. As I always say, I do have several of them, and that is no joke. I also um, am so grateful for the fact that you follow me on all the social networks, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Google+, and uh, gee whiz, I'm just everywhere. Facebook, as a matter of fact. And you can get a lot of those links, again, off my website, AnnetteRochelleAben.wordpress.com. And I do look forward to the next time we get together and share our attitude of gratitude. <laughs>